welcome each one to the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we gather to praise his name, to speak of him, and to study his word. Got some changes to your bulletin, if, uh, if I might. Um, Brother Pete and Sue are ill, so I'll just fill in for, uh, for Patriarch Patentler. You need to uh, notice that uh, my pianist caught that I put the wrong number on for the uh, hymn after the scripture reading. That hymn is number 319 instead of 317. I got the words right. The uh, chance for us to meet together is exciting. Always glad to be here, Lord willing. And uh, pray that uh, you would hold up our brother Josh as he uh, breaks the bread of life. Uh, we go way back, don't we, Josh? <laughs> I think I met him in fifth or sixth grade. and We've uh, always had a real close bond. And I am uh, happy to present him to you for your prayers and your you're uh, holding him up because I know that his dedication to the Lord has been unwavering and his growth has been uh, substantial. And uh, I'm pleased to, to be a mentor to him and uh, to know him. And uh, I think we're all happy to uh, support him. For our, uh, and I thank Brother Dave for playing tonight. Um, does a great job every time, and uh, he's a good neighbor, too. Never lets me down, doesn't complain about me, or, well, not to me, he doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, we've had a, a lot of happy years together when we lived in Sibley across from each other and now next door, so always a, always a treat to, to be with my brother. And Kay, you're, you're in on that too, I guess. Do I have to say that? <laughs> For our call to worship today, I'm going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Our opening hymn will be 325. When you get your place, please stand.
Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the beauty of this day, for the opportunity to come and sing praises to you. You have strengthened us and given us the opportunity that uh, so many do not avail themselves to. Lord, we pray that your word, your inspiration, and your spirit will go out to all those that don't know you. For we know that every one of them needs you in their lives. We hope, Father, that uh, in this hour that our praises to you will be pleasing and that uh, our service unto you will be uh, a blessing to each one that's here. Let us all with one heart and one mind be the, uh, the saints that will uh, please you and, uh, and will uh, go on forward in this search for the kingdom. Bless us this hour, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For my opening scriptures, I'll start with Ephesians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. Wherefore he say, saith, Awaketh thou, sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. From John chapter 5, verse 40. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So that's 319 in your hymn.
The Lord tells us to search the scriptures. He tells us to read, study, and obey. Why? Why is it important for us to read and search our scriptures? As you know, the theme is search the scriptures. Not read the scriptures. I think that phrasing is on purpose. The word search implies that we are looking for an answer to a question or questions. Well, then what are those questions? What are we searching for? Maybe we have questions about his law or about our calling. Maybe we have questions about why certain things happen to us or others that we love. Why does God allow division among his people and his church? Whatever our question is, the Lord says to search his scriptures because they have the answer. Now the answer, as many of us know, is not always clear or easy to find. But when we're looking, it's there. In Matthew, chapter 7, verses 12 through 13. Say unto them, Ask of God, ask and it shall be given you. And seek ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh the receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And unto him that knocketh it shall be opened. I am someone who likes to think they have all the answers. Uh, so I'm a little confused on why it doesn't say, ask Josh Matting or ask Dan Keeler. As Dan has so kindly put it, uh, we've known each other for a long time and he's been one of my mentors for a long time. And I know how smart Dan is. And I know he has a lot of answers to a lot of questions. But the scripture says to ask God. Why? Is it because he's all knowing? Is it because God is the creator of all things? God who sent his only begotten son? From 1 John chapter 3 verses 20 through 24. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwells in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that the abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. I, as some of you may know, um, I get the pleasure every Friday evening to lead um, the youth group FISH which is sixth grade to 12th grade. And one of the themes that, we're, that I'm trying to really um, get the kids to understand is 
searching their scriptures. Um, I see Ava's here, so Ava could tell you that oftentimes I will assign homework of looking up certain scriptures or reading a certain chapter in a book um, because I understand that by starting off early, it's a lot easier than later on in life. I often wonder if in my own childhood, if life would have been a little bit easier if I would have understand how to search the scriptures. Now, I've had good mentors, as I stated, uh, Dan Coral, who I've known for a long time. Um, and I've been blessed with having Coral being one of my Sunday school teachers. But it was not something that was ever discussed in my family. Um, to say that my family were believers would be um, would be inaccurate. Um, my parents did believe in God, but that is about how far that went. Um, I don't believe that. I think the first set of scriptures I got was probably when I was about 16. And they were some hand-me-downs from um, someone from church in Sperry, Oklahoma. But the other thing we've been discussing in Fish the last couple of Fridays is faith. Faith is something I, I think is very important, and faith is something I can talk about for hours. Luckily for you guys, we do not have that much time. So hours, we will not be here. But I think it's important to talk about faith when we talk about searching the scriptures. Now, if anyone is unsure of what those two have to do with each other, um, I would say searching the scriptures helps us build our faith. And that's something I've been trying to teach the kids at Fish is sometimes our faith can waver. But when it wavers, we're told to go unto God, to ask him for help. When we have questions, why wouldn't we look into the scriptures? Is that not proof? Is that not proof of our faith that the answers are right there that we have been questioning on God? As I had stated, uh, going to church, um, believing when I was growing up wasn't something that my family really encouraged. Um, but at an early age, I had a thirst for knowing the Lord. Now, I'm not sure really where that came from, um, besides, obviously, God. But, you know, as I said, God was never really mentioned in the household. I believe the only times uh, Jesus' name was spoke was in vain in my home. So knowing who he was was difficult for me of truly understanding who he is. And I wanted to know of the miracles, of the love that God has for his children. And in many ways, faith is the only reason why I'm here 
right now. Roger Tracy, who is also a good friend and a mentor, he often says, the smartest thing that I ever did was leave small town Sperry, Oklahoma for Independence, Missouri. And for years when he would say that, I wasn't sure how I felt about that. I wasn't sure that was really true. But now that I'm older, I kind of understand what Roger was saying. See, if you don't know much about my family, I'll give a short um, description. Uh, my father was an alcoholic, um, a career criminal. We moved often, mostly because he had outstanding warrants. And whenever he felt that the, uh, the police was getting too close, we would move. So from early on, I remember living in Michigan, Minnesota, Montana. For a while, we lived in Canada. Um, and then we moved to North Dakota. And then we moved to Texas. And then finally, we moved somehow back to Oklahoma, or moved to Oklahoma. So now my mother, my mother is a special woman in many ways. But like many of us, life gets hard sometimes. And some people allow that hardness of life to affect them. My mother tried very hard raising us, but she, is, she has mental health issues. And no matter how hard she tried, Sometimes overcoming those wasn't enough. I think I question a lot of times if, if we had more of God in our homes, in my home, if that would have helped her. Don't know. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, it's a very very popular scripture. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove to yonder, yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I have never moved any mountains, but I was able to change the course of my life. There's a famous poem, I'm sure many of you know it. It's by Robert Frost. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler, Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Do we not sometimes find ourselves in the same predicament? Are we not constantly finding ourselves at the same fork, one path that looks well-traveled? There's lights, there's probably water fountains every mile or so. And then there's another path. It's not nearly as well lit. Um, there's debris on the ground. If you travel that path, you might have to remove some logs or take different routes to get past whatever streams or rocks. That's the path, the first path, that's well lit, with water fountains every couple of miles. 
That's the path that the world wants us to follow. We live in a time where truly following God's word is dangerous. The adversary wants us following his path. After all, his path is easier and perhaps a little bit more fun. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all the world that is of the lusts of the flesh, and the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. As I said, the other path is a little less traveled. That is the path that God wants us to take. That is the same path that Moses took, that Noah took, that David took, that Nephi took very same path that Jesus took. That path is a little bit more work. Maybe it's a little bit less fun. But the reward in the end is so much greater than anything that we could have on this earth. In Romans chapter 12, Verses 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. For I say, through the graces given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measures of faith. Do we have faith to travel down that path, to travel down that road, do we have the stamina? It's a long path. We cannot decide that that path is too long and too hard and step off. We must stay strong, cling to the rod of faith, cling to our scriptures. We must read, study, and obey. We as his people must continually examine ourselves. Are we following the path? We must look for division among us and eliminate it. We, have, we as humans have a tendency to not always get along with each other. Um, each and every one of us have a different personality. And sometimes personalities tend to clash. Um, not everyone gets along. Um, unfortunately, that happens here in our church among our brothers and our sisters. And John There's two verses I would like to read in John. The first one being in chapter 13, verses 34. The second one being chapter 14, verses 15. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, and that ye also love one another. 
And in chapter 14, if ye love me, keep my commandments. What are God's commandments? We know God has a lot of commandments. But there are two that are important, that he tells us that are the most important. And if you follow these two, every other commandment will just come naturally. If you love me, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love me. Do we love one another? Are we loving one another? It starts here, among us. How are we supposed to go out in the world as missionaries, teaching about love and forgiveness, trying to bring people into God's glory if we're not loving one another? Who do we have ought against? In Matthew, chapter 5, verses 24 through 26. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of his judgment. And whoever shall say to his brother, Raka or Abaka, shall be in the danger of the council. And whoever shall stay, say to his brother, Thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if ye shall come unto me, or shall desire to come unto me, or if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave thou gift before the altar, and go thy way unto the brother, and first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Are we following God's commandments. Are we trying to reconcile? Or are we doing what we sometimes do best and make, make things worse? When there's a fire, how do we put it out? With water or gasoline? Both are liquids. I hope that we pick the can labeled water. If I have aught against my brother Isaiah, and if I have a real bone to pick with him, and sometimes I do, sometimes when we see each other Sunday morning, his hugs are about 30 seconds less than what they normally are. And that really makes me upset. Should not the first thing I do is reconcile with him? I just read the scripture before you. Before you come unto me, before you take part of communion, before you offer a gift unto me, reconcile with your brother. God doesn't tell us to dwell on it, to talk about it nonstop, to spread gossip unto others. Unless I'm going to Dan for advice or guidance, he shouldn't know about the bone I have to pick with Isaiah. Are we following God's commandments? Are we loving one another? Do we have faith? Are we searching our scriptures, scriptures for answers? Now, obviously, I don't have any bones to pick with Isaiah. Um, Isaiah is someone I consider to be a good, close friend. So I'm not sure if we ever really had issues, uh, per se. We don't always agree on certain things, but that's not the same as, as having ought against one another. But still, are we looking for the people we've wronged? Are we asking for reconciliation? Are we trying? I 
I shall be telling you this with a sigh. Some are ages and ages hence. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one last traveled by, and that made all the difference. May the, all the difference in Moses and Noah and David and Nephi, Jesus. I pray we have the courage and faith to follow God's path. The world will only get darker and darker. And I hope we can find the light before it's too late. Before we can no longer see. With closing, I would like to end with John Chapter 8, verses 10 through 12. When Jesus had, ra- Jesus had raised up himself and saw none of her accusers, and the woman standing, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And the woman glorified God from that hour and believed on his name. And then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness and shall have the light of life. I surely want to thank my brother for the preparation he made. I thought it was exceptional. And he brought us a feast of scriptures tonight, this afternoon. And uh, how can we not be filled when the the Lord's word is poured out amongst us? Uh, Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much. We're going to close our service with uh, hymn number 67. When you find your place, please stand. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we bow our heads now before you with one heart and one mind, with love as we think upon you and upon all that you've given to us, as we reflect on the words of your scripture that have been poured out to us this night. I would ask that you might prick our hearts that those words might soak in, that they wouldn't just roll off, but they, they would truly become part of us. And as we go throughout our day and throughout our weeks, that we would remember you. We would remember your love and your word. 
that your spirit might be with us. We thank you so much for the blessing that we've had this day. And we would pray that that blessing might continue to be with us. I would pray that as we walk out of this place that your spirit might fall on each one of us. That you might give us a parting blessing. And that in turn we would always be looking to you. And I would be praying for, I would pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.